As Halloween approached, the small town of Maplewood began to buzz with excitement. Children eagerly planned their costumes, and adults decked their homes with ghoulish decorations. Yet among the cheerful preparations, a dark shadow loomed over the town, an old legend about the Maplewood Asylum. The asylum had stood on the outskirts of town for nearly a century, abandoned for decades. It was rumored to be haunted, and locals whispered tales of the tormented souls who had once roamed its halls. They spoke of patients subjected to brutal experiments and ghostly apparitions that still lingered in the building. Most people steered clear of the asylum, especially on Halloween, when the veil between the living and the dead was said to be the thinnest. But this Halloween, three friends, Megan, Jake, and Emily, decided to test their courage. They had heard stories about a ghost named Sarah, a former patient who had died under mysterious circumstances. It was said that if you called her name three times in front of a mirror at midnight, she would appear. The friends thought it would be the perfect Halloween adventure. Um, on the night of Halloween, they gathered at Jake's house. The air was thick with excitement and a hint of dread as they made their way to the asylum. Flashlights flickered in the darkness, illuminating the overgrown path that led to the entrance. The building loomed above them, its cracked windows and peeling paint creating a sense of foreboding. As they stepped inside, the air grew colder, and a strange silence enveloped them. The remnants of the past were scattered everywhere. Rusted medical equipment, faded photographs, and tattered clothes. Shadows danced along the walls, playing tricks on their minds. Are we really doing this? Emily asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Of course, Jake replied, trying to sound brave. It's just a legend. They made their way to the old infirmary where the stories said Sarah had spent her final days. In the center of the room stood a cracked mirror covered in dust. They gathered around it, their hearts racing. Ready? Megan said, her voice shaky. They nodded, each feeling the weight of what they were about to do. On the count of three, Jake said. One, two, three. Sarah, 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 they chanted together, their voices echoing in the empty room. At first, nothing happened. The silence was oppressive and doubt crept in. Just as they were about to laugh it off, a chill swept through the room. The temperature dropped suddenly and their breath became visible in the air. The mirror began to fog up and a figure slowly materialized within the glass. Panic surged through them. Emily stumbled back, crashing into a metal gurney. What the hell is happening? She screamed. The figure in the mirror was a woman, her face pale and gaunt, her eyes filled with sorrow. Help me she whispered, her voice a haunting echo. Help me. The friends stood frozen, unable to comprehend the reality of what they were seeing. Jake summoned his courage and stepped closer to the mirror. Sarah, he called out, but the moment he spoke her name, the lights flickered violently and the figure vanished, leaving only the swirling fog. What do we do? Megan asked, her eyes wide with fear. We need to get out of here, Emily insisted. Now. As they turned to leave, the door slammed shut with a deafening bang. The sound reverberated through the asylum, and the temperature dropped even further. Shadows flickered across the walls, and the friends could hear soft whispers, indiscernible voices that seemed to beckon them. Panic set in, and they banged on the door, but it wouldn't budge. We're trapped, Jake shouted, his voice tinged with desperation. Suddenly, the whispers grew louder, surrounding them, echoing off the walls. Help us, help us they pleaded, blending with the sound of their racing hearts. Megan, trying to keep her composure, suggested they look for another way out. They searched frantically, moving deeper into the asylum's dark corridors. Each room they entered seemed to contain fragments of the past, old patient records, rusted restraints, and the eerie feeling of being watched. In one room, they discovered a journal, its pages yellowed with age. It detailed the grim history of the asylum, describing the cruel treatments and experiments conducted on the patients. The final entry was scrawled in a shaky hand. They won't let us leave. The darkness consumes us. Help us. A cold breeze rushed past them, and Emily felt a chill run down her spine. Guys, we need to go back. Now, she urged, her voice trembling. As they retraced their steps, the atmosphere grew heavier. Shadows loomed larger, and the whispers intensified, filling their ears with a cacophony of despair. They stumbled upon a stairwell leading to the basement, and despite their better judgment, they decided to explore. The basement was pitch dark, and the air felt thick with dread. 
As they descended the creaking stairs, they heard a soft, low sobbing echoing through the damp space. It was a haunting sound, and it drew them further down against their instincts. In the dim light of their flashlights, they spotted a figure curled up in the corner, an apparition of a young girl, her long hair matted and her dress tattered. Help me, please, she cried, her voice breaking. It's Sarah, Jake whispered, his heart pounding. We have to help her. Megan stepped forward, her voice filled with compassion. We're here to help you, Sarah. What do you need? The girl looked up, her eyes filled with unshed tears. You must free us. They won't let us leave. Before they could respond, the temperature dropped again, and a loud bang echoed through the basement. The walls trembled, and the lights flickered wildly. The ghostly girl's face twisted in fear. You must go! They're coming! Panic erupted among the friends as they turned to escape. The shadows thickened, twisting into dark figures that surged toward them. They raced up the stairs, you know, desperate to escape the clutches of the asylum. The whispers turned into screams, echoing through the halls. Just as they reached the door, it burst open, and they stumbled out into the night. They didn't stop running until they were far away from the asylum, gasping for breath under the moonlight. As they caught their breath, they looked back. The asylum loomed behind them, silent once more, but the shadows danced in the windows, as if the souls within were still trapped, still calling for help. That Halloween night, they had learned that some legends were rooted in truth, and that the past would never truly let go. Story number two. As Halloween approached in 2019, the small town of Millbury was buzzing with excitement. Children were busy planning their costumes, and adults were decorating their homes with eerie decorations. However, amidst the festive spirit, a darker tale lurked beneath the surface, a story that the townsfolk rarely spoke of, especially during the Halloween season. It began decades earlier when a young girl named Sarah Sullivan vanished without a trace. Sarah was a bright, adventurous eight-year-old with a wild imagination. One fateful Halloween night, she decided to go trick-or-treating with her friends in the nearby woods, an area that was both enchanting and foreboding. As twilight descended, the group ventured deeper into the forest, their laughter echoing through the trees. But when they reached a clearing, Sarah suddenly stopped. She gazed toward a dilapidated old house that had long been abandoned, its windows boarded up and its door hanging off its hinges. Let's go explore that house, Sarah exclaimed, her eyes gleaming with excitement. Her friends hesitated, but Sarah's infectious enthusiasm won them over. They made their way to the creaking front door, which seemed to groan under the weight of its own history. The air turned thick with tension as they stepped inside. The house was dark and musty, filled with the remnants of a forgotten era. Shadows danced along the walls as they explored each room, their laughter fading into uneasy silence. As they approached the staircase, the friends dared each other to ascend to the second floor. Sarah, always the bravest of the group, led the charge. Halfway up, however, they heard a low whispering sound emanating from the darkness above. Did you hear that? One of the boys whispered, his voice trembling. It's just the wind, Sarah replied, though even she felt a chill run down her spine. With a deep breath, she pushed open the door at the top of the stairs, revealing a room cloaked in shadows. The moment they entered, the door slammed shut behind them. Panic set in as they realized they were trapped. The whispers grew louder, a chorus of soft, eerie voices swirling around them. Sarah, Sarah, they called, beckoning her deeper into the darkness. Terrified, Sarah's friends banged on the door, but it wouldn't budge. She felt drawn to the voices, an inexplicable urge to respond. What do you want? She called out, her voice shaking. Suddenly, the temperature plummeted, and a ghostly figure materialized in front of her. It was a woman, dressed in tattered clothing, her eyes hollow and filled with sorrow. Help me, the figure whispered, reaching out a hand. I've been lost for so long. In that instant, Sarah felt a connection, a pull toward the spirit. I'll help you, she said, stepping forward, but her friends screamed, urging her to leave. The spirit's face twisted in anguish, and the whispers grew frantic. Don't leave me, Sarah shouted, torn between the ghost and her friends. As her friends finally managed to pry the door open, they pulled Sarah away, dragging her into the safety of the hallway. The door slammed shut behind them, trapping the spirit once more. They fled the house, hearts racing, vowing never to return. But Sarah was haunted by the encounter. 
In the days that followed, she grew increasingly withdrawn, plagued by nightmares of the woman's pleading eyes. Halloween came and went, but for Sarah, the terror never ceased. A week later, on a chilly November evening, Sarah's parents reported her missing. Despite exhaustive searches, she was never found. Some believed she had succumbed to the lure of the abandoned house drawn into the depths of its haunted history. Others whispered that she had become one with the spirit, destined to roam the woods forever. As the years passed, the tale faded into the background, yet the house remained a source of fear for the townsfolk. Every Halloween, strange occurrences were reported, flickering lights, cold winds, and disembodied whispers echoing through the trees. Some claimed to see a little girl in a tattered costume, wandering the woods, while others swore they could hear her laughter mingled with the wind. Fast forward to 2022. A group of college students, eager to debunk local legends, arrived in Millbury on Halloween night. Armed with flashlights and cameras, they decided to investigate the haunted house, convinced it was all a myth. They set up camp in the clearing, sharing ghost stories to pass the time. The air was thick with excitement and apprehension. As night fell, they approached the house, the moonlight casting eerie shadows on its decaying facade. The front door creaked open, as if inviting them in. They entered, their flashlights illuminating the dust-covered furniture and cobwebbed corners. The atmosphere felt heavy, charged with an energy they couldn't explain. They explored each room, laughing nervously at the creaks and groans of the old house. Uh, but as they climbed the staircase, an inexplicable sense of dread washed over them. When they reached the second floor, they heard the whispers. Help me. Sarah. Sarah. Panic surged through the group. They stumbled backward, trying to leave, but the door slammed shut behind them, just as it had done for Sarah all those years ago. Frantically, they pushed against the door, but it wouldn't budge. Suddenly, the air grew cold, and the ghostly figure of the woman appeared once more. The students gasped, fear etched on their faces. Help me. Help her, she whispered pointing toward a darkened corner of the room. The leader of the group, trembling but determined, stepped forward. We want to help you, he shouted, his voice echoing against the walls. But the spirit's expression turned to one of despair. Time is running out, she warned, and in that moment, the room began to shake. The students huddled together, fearing the worst. Just as they felt they would be swallowed by the darkness, the door flew open, and they stumbled out into the hallway, they ran from the house, breathless and terrified, vowing never to return. As they reached the clearing, they turned back, seeing the house standing ominously against the moonlit sky. But just before they left the woods, they saw her, a little girl in a tattered costume, watching them with hollow eyes. Halloween in Millbury became synonymous with the legend of Sarah Sullivan, a chilling reminder that some spirits never rest. On every Halloween night, whispers could be heard in the woods, calling for help, echoing the fears of those who dared to tread too close to the old haunted house. As the townsfolk would tell the story, it became clear some doors once opened can never truly be shut, and some spirits will always linger, waiting for someone to listen. Story number three. It was October 31st, and the air was thick with anticipation. Children donned costumes and roamed the streets, their laughter mingling with the rustling leaves. But for Emma, this Halloween was about to take a dark turn. She had always loved the thrill of ghost stories, but never imagined she'd find herself living one. Emma and her friends had decided to spend the night at an old, abandoned house on the outskirts of town, rumored to be haunted. It was a two-story Victorian structure, shrouded in vines and shadows, with windows like vacant eyes staring into the darkness. They had heard the tales, strange sounds in the night, flickering lights, and even sightings of a ghostly figure dressed in white, wandering the halls. But Emma was skeptical. She had always been the rational one in the group. As they made their way to the house, the excitement was palpable. They set up camp in the living room, adorned with dusty furniture covered in white sheets, the air thick with the smell of mildew. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting eerie shadows through the cracked windows. They lit candles and shared their scariest stories, laughter echoing off the walls. But as the night wore on, the atmosphere shifted. A chill crept into the room, and the shadows seemed to deepen. Emma dismissed it as her imagination running wild, fueled by the ghost stories they had shared. They decided to explore the house, armed with flashlights, their laughter turning to nervous giggles. 
As they moved from room to room, they felt an unsettling presence, like they were being watched. In the master bedroom, they found an old ornate mirror that reflected their anxious faces. Emma stepped closer, entranced by the intricate frame, when suddenly she felt a cold breeze wash over her, and the lights flickered. She turned to her friends, who were whispering in hushed tones, pointing towards the hallway. Did you see that? whispered Jake, his voice trembling. Emma squinted into the darkness, but saw nothing. The group decided to investigate, the thrill of fear pushing them forward. They crept down the hall, the floorboards creaking beneath their feet. The air felt heavier, thicker, as if something was pressing down on them. In the corner of the hallway, they noticed a door slightly ajar. It had not been there before. They exchanged nervous glances before Emma, ever the brave one, pushed it open. Inside was a small room, almost like a storage space, filled with dusty old furniture and an overwhelming feeling of despair. In the center stood an old trunk. Emma felt an inexplicable urge to open it, despite her friend's protests. With a deep breath, she knelt and lifted the lid. Inside lay an assortment of old toys, dolls with cracked porcelain faces and a faded teddy bear. But there was something else, a journal, its pages yellowed and brittle. Emma opened it, her heart racing as she began to read the entries. They were filled with the ramblings of a young girl who had lived in the house many decades ago. The girl wrote about her fears, her loneliness, and her longing for escape. The last entry sent a chill down Emma's spine. I hear her crying again, the woman in white. She wants me to join her. Suddenly, a loud bang echoed through the house and the candles flickered wildly. The temperature dropped dramatically and Emma's breath became visible in the cold air. They all froze, terror gripping their hearts. Emma slammed the trunk shut and they rushed out of the room, desperate to escape the suffocating atmosphere. As they raced back to the living room, they heard a soft whisper like a child's voice echoing through the halls. Play with me. It was chilling, each syllable sending ice through their veins. They stumbled over each other, panic rising, and finally burst into the living room. But something was different. The candles had blown out, plunging them into darkness. They scrambled for their flashlights, and when the beams flickered to life, they illuminated the room, revealing that the furniture had been rearranged. The chairs were now facing each other in a circle, as if waiting for an audience. Okay, this isn't funny anymore, Jake said, his voice shaky. Emma's heart raced as she felt an overwhelming sense of dread. They all stood frozen, the room heavy with an unseen presence. The whispers grew louder, echoing around them. Join us. Play with us. Without thinking, Emma grabbed her phone and turned on the flashlight. The beam pierced the darkness, revealing a figure standing in the corner. It was a girl, no older than ten, dressed in a tattered white dress. Her hair hung in tangled strands and her face was gaunt, eyes hollow and filled with sorrow. Emma's heart pounded as the girl smiled, a haunting expression that sent chills down her spine. The girl beckoned with a bony finger, her voice soft yet demanding. Come play with me. Emma felt the urge to move, but fear rooted her to the spot. Her friends were paralyzed with terror, staring at the apparition. The girl took a step closer, and the air thickened with despair. In a moment of sheer panic, Emma screamed, No! She turned and bolted toward the door, her friends following suit. They stumbled through the dark hallways, the girl's whispers chasing them. You can't leave. You promised to play. They burst out of the house, gasping for air, the chill of the night air hitting them like a wave. They didn't stop running until they reached their car, breathless and terrified. As they sped away, Emma glanced back at the house. The girl stood at the window, her haunting smile etched in Emma's memory forever. That Halloween night changed everything for Emma. She never returned to the house, but the whispers never truly left her. At night, in the silence, she could still hear the girl calling her, the weight of her sorrow lingering like a fog. Emma learned that some stories are not just tales but warnings, and some places should be left undisturbed. As the years passed, Emma often recounted the experience, warning others about the house on the outskirts of town. The children who dared to approach it spoke of a chilling aura, the lingering sound of a girl's laughter, and the feeling of being watched. And on every Halloween night, the whispers of the girl echoed through the air, reminding them that some games are better left unplayed. Story number four. Every Halloween, the small town of Maplewood became a canvas for creativity and fear. 
Pumpkins adorned every porch, ghosts dangled from trees, and children roamed the streets, their laughter mixing with the crisp autumn air. But this year felt different. A sense of unease gripped the town, a lingering reminder of the old Maplewood Cemetery that had long been forgotten. The cemetery had a notorious reputation, abandoned for decades and rumored to be haunted. Few dared to enter, but legends about a spectral figure named Elizabeth, the restless spirit of a woman who died tragically on Halloween night, kept the town's children awake with fear. She was said to roam the graveyard searching for her lost child. On Halloween night, a group of five friends, Daniel, Claire, Brian, Lucy, and Kevin, decided to put their courage to the test. They had grown up hearing the stories of Elizabeth, and they felt it was their, their rite of passage to explore the cemetery. With flashlights in hand and a sense of bravado, they made their way to the overgrown gates, the chill of the night wrapping around them like a shroud. As they stepped inside, the air thickened and the atmosphere shifted. The moonlight filtered through the twisted branches, casting eerie shadows that danced on the ground. The headstones, some toppled and cracked, stood like sentinels of the past, watching as the friends ventured deeper. This place is creepy, Lucy whispered, glancing nervously around. Come on, it's just a graveyard, Brian said, trying to sound brave. Let's find Elizabeth. They moved further into the cemetery, the light from their flashlights flickering as they approached an old, decrepit mausoleum. The structure was covered in vines and the door hung slightly ajar, inviting them to explore. Should we go in? Claire asked, her voice barely a whisper. Of course. We came here for a thrill, right? Kevin replied, grinning. With a collective breath, they pushed the door open and it creaked ominously. Inside, the air was musty and filled with the scent of decay. Cobwebs draped over the stone sarcophagus in the center of the room. The silence was heavy and a feeling of dread crept over them. Look at this, Daniel exclaimed, pointing to a dusty journal resting on a nearby pedestal. It's the journal of the caretaker from decades ago. Curiosity peaked. They gathered around as Daniel opened the journal. The pages were yellowed and fragile, filled with entries detailing the history of the cemetery and its residents. As they read, a chilling passage caught their attention. Beware the restless spirit of Elizabeth. She seeks vengeance for her lost child. Those who disturb her grave shall pay the price. Suddenly, a cold gust of wind blew through the mausoleum, snuffing out their flashlights. Darkness enveloped them, and the air turned frigid. Panic set in as they fumbled for their phones, the dim screens casting an eerie glow. What was that? Claire shrieked, her voice trembling. I don't know. Let's get out of here. Lucy urged her eyes wide with fear. As they turned to leave, the door slammed shut with a deafening bang. The walls seemed to close in around them, and the temperature dropped even more. Open the door, Kevin shouted, pounding against the wood, but it wouldn't budge. The sound of soft crying echoed through the mausoleum, a haunting melody that sent shivers down their spines. Help me. Please help me. The voice was sorrowful, filled with despair. Is that, is that her? Brian stammered, his eyes darting around the dark room. Elizabeth? Daniel called out, his voice quaking. What do you want? The crying grew louder, and the shadows in the corners shifted. A figure began to materialize, translucent and ethereal, a woman in a tattered white gown, her face streaked with tears. My child, my child is lost, she lamented, her voice echoing through the chamber. The friend stood frozen, torn between fear and empathy. We can help you, Claire offered hesitantly. What do you need? The ghostly figure turned toward them, her hollow eyes filled with a desperate longing. Find my child. Find him before it's too late. Before they could respond, the mausoleum shook violently, sending them sprawling to the ground. The shadows writhed and the air crackled with energy. We need to get out, Lucy screamed, scrambling to her feet. Desperately, they pushed against the door again. This time, it burst open and they tumbled out into the cool night air. They ran blindly through the cemetery, not daring to look back as the cries of Elizabeth faded behind them. Gasping for breath, they reached the gates, stumbling out onto the road. They didn't stop until they were far away from the cemetery, their hearts racing and adrenaline pumping. What just happened? Kevin panted, still shaken. I don't know, but we can't go back, Lucy said, her voice steadying. We have to warn others. As they made their way home, they couldn't shake the feeling that Elizabeth was still watching, her sorrowful eyes following them. The experience had changed them. They would never look at Halloween the same way again. 
Later that night, as they recounted their story to others at a Halloween party, they noticed something chilling. A young boy, dressed as a ghost, stood in the corner, his face obscured by a sheet. But as he turned to leave, he paused, glancing back at them. For a brief moment, his eyes glinted with the same sorrow they had seen in Elizabeth's, and in that fleeting glance they recognized the pain of a child who had been lost long ago. The truth settled over them like a thick fog. Some spirits remained trapped in their sorrow, and they had merely scratched the surface of the horror that lingered in the darkness of Maplewood. Story number five. The old Johnson estate had stood on the outskirts of the small town of Willow Creek for over a century, its crumbling facade a testament to a long forgotten past. Locals referred to it as the haunted house, a place where whispers of terror filled the air, especially during Halloween. Children dared each other to approach it, while adults warned their offspring to stay far away. In October of 1985, a group of adventurous teenagers decided to test their courage. Among them were Jake, Emily, Tom, and Sarah. Fueled by teenage bravado and the thrill of urban legends, they made a plan to explore the Johnson estate on Halloween night. They had heard the stories of the ghostly figure of Mrs. Johnson, who had vanished in a mysterious fire and the eerie laughter of children that echoed from the house during the witching hour. As twilight descended, the group gathered outside the estate, flashlights in hand. The house loomed before them, shrouded in darkness and shadow. The air was still, an unsettling quiet, settling over the landscape as they approached the front door, which hung slightly ajar as if beckoning them in. I can't believe we're actually doing this, Emily whispered, her voice trembling slightly. Come on, it's just a bunch of stories, Jake scoffed, pushing the door open with a loud creak. The inside was even more ominous than they imagined. Dust hung in the air like a thick fog, and the smell of mildew and decay clung to their clothes. Shadows danced on the walls, and every creak of the floorboards made their hearts race. They stepped into the foyer, the faint beam of their flashlights revealing a grand staircase leading to the upper floors. The walls were lined with faded portraits, eyes seemingly following them as they moved. An overwhelming sense of dread hung in the air, but they pressed on, eager to prove their bravery. Let's check out the living room first, Tom suggested, his bravado masking his fear. They made their way to a large room filled with old furniture draped in white sheets. As they entered, the atmosphere shifted. It felt as if the house itself were watching them. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed from the upper floor. The group froze, eyes wide. What was that? Sarah gasped. Probably just the wind. Jake said, though his voice lacked conviction. Let's go see, Tom urged, leading the way up the staircase. Each step creaked under their weight, and the oppressive silence became suffocating. As they reached the second floor, they noticed a faint light flickering from a room at the end of the hall. Should we check it out? Emily asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Yeah, let's go, Jake replied, though uncertainty flashed in his eyes. They crept toward the door, the light growing brighter as they approached. Just as they reached for the handle, the door swung open violently, revealing a dark room filled with swirling shadows. Hello? A voice called out, echoing eerily through the hallway. The group jumped back, heartbeats racing. They exchanged nervous glances, debating whether to run or confront whatever lay inside. Let's get out of here, Sarah whispered, panic creeping into her voice. But before they could turn, the voice came again, this time softer and more melodic. Come play with us. Suddenly, the room filled with laughter, high-pitched and childlike, yet tinged with something sinister. The sound sent chills down their spines. Jake took a step back, bumping into Tom, who was frozen in fear. We need to go now, he shouted, adrenaline surging. They turned to run, but the shadows shifted, blocking their path. A figure materialized before them, a translucent woman, her face twisted in sorrow. Why won't you play with us, she whispered, reaching out with a skeletal hand. The group screamed, racing back down the hallway. They stumbled down the staircase, the laughter growing louder, echoing in their ears. It felt as if the house itself was alive, eager to consume them. As they burst through the front door, a sudden force pushed against them, slamming it shut with a deafening bang. They ran into the night, hearts pounding, but the laughter followed them, growing more manic and desperate. The teens sprinted through the overgrown yard and into the street, desperate to escape the haunted estate. The laughter began to fade, but the sense of dread clung to them like a dark cloud. 
high. They didn't stop running until they reached the safety of a nearby diner, panting and terrified. What just happened? Emily gasped, her eyes wide with disbelief. Did we really see that? Tom asked, his voice trembling. Jake, trying to sound brave, shrugged. It was just a trick of the light. We let our imaginations get the better of us. But deep down, they all knew the truth. The Johnson estate was not just an old house. It was a vessel of lost souls, forever trapped in its dark embrace. After that night, the group drifted apart, each haunted by the memories of their encounter. Halloween became a day of reflection for them, a reminder of the night they faced the unknown and barely escaped. Years later, on Halloween night, a new family moved into the Johnson estate, unaware of the horrors that lay within its walls. As they unpacked boxes and settled in, faint whispers echoed through the halls, calling for them to join the spectral children playing in the shadows. But when the clock struck midnight, the laughter grew louder, swirling through the air like a chilling wind. And as the lights flickered and the temperature dropped, the new occupants felt the weight of the house pressing down on them, as if it were alive, eager for new souls to join its haunting legacy. In the small town of Willow Creek, the stories of the Johnson estate continued, woven into the fabric of local folklore. And every Halloween, children dared each other to approach its darkened door, unaware of the horrors that awaited inside, eternally calling for playmates. Story number six. In a small town nestled between dense forests and rolling hills, Halloween had always been a time for celebration. But for the residents of Maplewood, it also marked the anniversary of a terrifying event, a night that had left scars deeper than any costume could hide. Five years ago, a group of teenagers eager for adventure decided to explore an old asylum on the outskirts of town. The Maplewood Asylum, abandoned for decades, was infamous for its dark history. Rumors swirled about the experiments conducted on patients, the screams that echoed through its halls, and the spirits of those who never left. The story went that every year on Halloween, the spirits would awaken, seeking revenge for the wrongs committed against them. That year, a tight-knit group of friends, Liam, Sarah, Max, and Jenna, had decided to test their courage. They were tired of the typical Halloween festivities and craved something more thrilling. As the sun set, they gathered flashlights and snacks, joking nervously about what they might find. The walk to the asylum felt longer than usual, the darkness creeping in around them. With each step, the trees seemed to whisper secrets, and the wind howled through the branches. But laughter echoed in their hearts, bolstered by bravado. When they reached the asylum, the towering building loomed ominously against the night sky, its windows like dark, empty eyes. They pushed open the rusty gate, the screeching sound sending shivers down their spines. Let's go, Liam said, trying to keep the mood light. They stepped inside, the air thick with dust and the scent of decay. Flashlights flickered, illuminating peeling paint and broken furniture. As they ventured deeper into the asylum, the atmosphere shifted. The laughter faded, replaced by an unsettling silence. They reached the main hall, where a grand chandelier hung precariously from the ceiling. Let's split up and explore, Sarah suggested, her excitement overshadowing her apprehension. They reluctantly agreed, each choosing a different path through the labyrinthine building. Liam and Max ventured upstairs while Jenna and Sarah stayed on the ground floor. As they explored, the silence enveloped them, broken only by the creaking of the floorboards beneath their feet. But something else lingered in the air, a feeling that they were not alone. After several minutes, Jenna and Sarah heard soft whispers drifting down the hall like echoes of conversations long forgotten. Do you hear that? Jenna asked, her eyes wide. Sarah nodded, fear creeping into her voice. It sounds like someone is down there. Meanwhile, Liam and Max had found themselves in a room filled with old medical equipment, a stark reminder of the asylum's dark past. They examined the rusty instruments, joking nervously, but their laughter died when they heard a loud bang from the hallway. What was that? Max whispered, glancing towards the door. They exchanged worried glances before deciding to regroup with Jenna and Sarah. As they descended the stairs, the air grew colder, the temperature dropping sharply. Back on the ground floor, Jenna and Sarah had moved closer to the whispers, curiosity overpowering their fear. They turned a corner and stumbled upon a room filled with dusty old files, the words patient records etched into the door. As they rifled through the papers, one file caught Jenna's eye, 
a photograph of a girl, her face twisted in terror, eyes wide with fear. The name beneath it read, Emily Turner, age 12. What happened to her? Jenna murmured, her voice barely a whisper. Suddenly, Sarah gasped, pointing to the far wall. A shadowy figure stood there, barely visible, but undeniably there. The girl's face mirrored the one in the photograph, pale and anguished. Run! Jenna screamed. They bolted down the hall just as Liam and Max arrived, panic etched on their faces. What's wrong? Liam shouted, trying to catch his breath. But before they could explain, the lights flickered ominously, plunging them into darkness. The whispers escalated into frantic cries echoing through the halls, a cacophony of sorrow and anger. They stumbled into the main hall, hearts pounding in their chests. The chandelier swayed violently overhead, casting eerie shadows on the walls. Suddenly, the doors slammed shut, trapping them inside. Why is this happening? Max shouted, his voice breaking with fear. We need to get out. But as they rushed to the doors, they found them locked tight. In the dim light, they saw the shadowy figure of Emily standing in the corner, her eyes filled with tears. Help me, she whispered, reaching out a trembling hand. Is she a ghost? Sarah asked, her voice trembling. What does she want? Before they could answer, a chilling wind swept through the hall, and they were knocked off their feet, landing hard on the cold floor. The lights flickered back on, illuminating Emily, who now stood directly in front of them. Her face twisted in agony. She pointed toward a nearby room, the room where they had found the patient records. Without thinking, they scrambled to their feet and dashed toward the door Emily had indicated. Inside, they discovered an old diary, its pages yellowed and brittle. As they opened it, they saw entries filled with terror, Emily's thoughts during her time in the asylum. She described cruel treatments and the longing to escape, but each entry ended with the same haunting phrase, they won't let me leave. As they read, the room grew colder still and the whispers intensified, echoing Emily's words. They're angry, they won't let me leave. The friends looked at each other, realizing that they had to help Emily find peace. Maybe we can set her free. Liam suggested, desperation in his voice. We need to confront whatever is keeping her here. They formed a circle, holding hands tightly, and began to chant the words Emily had written in her diary, urging her spirit to find peace. As they spoke, the atmosphere shifted. The whispers faded, replaced by a soft glow that enveloped Emily. Thank you, she whispered, her form becoming more translucent, the agony in her eyes easing. I can finally go. With one final smile, Emily vanished into the light, and the doors of the asylum creaked open. The friends stumbled out, gasping for air, the weight of the asylum lifting from their shoulders. They emerged into the cool night air while trembling but relieved. They had faced the darkness and helped a lost soul find peace. From that day forward, Halloween in Maplewood took on a new meaning. The story of Emily Turner became a reminder of compassion and courage, a testament to the power of friendship in the face of fear. The asylum was left undisturbed, but the whispers faded, replaced by the laughter of those who honored the memory of the girl who had once been trapped within its walls. Story number seven. In the rural outskirts of Cedar Creek, there lay a place known as Hollow Hill. The hill was notorious among locals, steeped in folklore and shrouded in mystery. It was said that the ground was cursed, a dark legacy stemming from an ancient witch who had been wronged by the townsfolk. Every Halloween, strange occurrences would plague the area, from inexplicable sounds to shadowy figures seen flitting through the trees. One fateful Halloween, a group of adventurous teens decided to test their bravery by camping near Hollow Hill. Emma, the fearless leader, rallied her friends, Mark, Sarah, and Jake, into what they called the ultimate Halloween adventure. Armed with flashlights, snacks, and an arsenal of ghost stories, they set off to the hill, unaware of the darkness they were about to unleash. As they set up camp in a clearing surrounded by towering trees, the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows that crept toward them. The air was thick with an uneasy stillness, and a chill began to settle in. Undeterred, they lit a fire, the crackling flames momentarily dispelling the darkness. Who wants to hear the story of the Witch of Hollow Hill? Emma asked, her eyes gleaming with excitement. I've heard it before. It's just a myth, Mark scoffed. But the others nodded, leaning closer to the fire as Emma began. Many years ago, a woman named Eliza was accused of witchcraft by the townsfolk. They believed she cursed the crops and brought misfortune. 
in a fit of rage, they chased her to this very hill where they hanged her from a tree. Legend has it that her spirit still haunts these woods, seeking vengeance on those who wronged her. They say that if you listen closely, you can hear her whispers on Halloween night. A sudden gust of wind rustled the leaves, causing them to shiver. Sounds like she's here, Jake joked, trying to lighten the mood. But a strange tension lingered in the air. As the night deepened, they shared ghost stories, their laughter mingling with the crackling fire. But as the clock struck midnight, the atmosphere shifted. The woods fell silent, and an unsettling feeling washed over them. I think it's time to head to bed, Sarah suggested, her voice shaky. Come on! It's Halloween. We can't go to bed yet, Emma protested. But deep down, she felt the weight of the night pressing in. Just as they were debating, a blood-curdling scream echoed through the trees, freezing them in place. What was that? Mark stammered, his bravado evaporating. Probably just an animal, Jake replied, though his voice lacked conviction. I don't think so. Let's check it out, Emma insisted, driven by an unshakable curiosity. The four friends grabbed their flashlights and ventured into the darkness, the beam of light flickering as they moved deeper into the woods. Shadows loomed, and the trees seemed to close in around them. Suddenly, they heard the scream again, closer this time. It was followed by whispers, soft, unintelligible murmurs that sent chills down their spines. Did you hear that? Sarah whispered, her eyes wide with fear. Yeah, but it's just the wind, Emma lied, trying to sound brave. Yet her heart raced as they pressed on. They stumbled into a small clearing where a dilapidated cabin stood, half hidden by the underbrush. The windows were shattered and the door hung ajar, creaking ominously in the night breeze. Let's check it out, Emma suggested, her excitement momentarily outweighing her fear. Inside, the air was thick with dust and decay. Cobwebs clung to the corners and the floor creaked beneath their weight. The atmosphere felt heavy, as if the walls themselves were watching. Guys, this place gives me the creeps, Sarah said, glancing around nervously. Relax, it's just an old cabin, Mark replied, though he too felt the unease settle in. As they explored the cabin, Emma discovered an old diary lying on a rotting table. She picked it up and began to read. The entries detailed Eliza's life, her isolation, and the torment she faced from the townsfolk. The last entry was frantic. They come for me tonight. I will not go quietly. They will know my wrath. A sudden crash echoed from the back of the cabin, and they all jumped. What was that? Jake shouted. I don't know, but we should leave. Mark urged, his earlier bravado gone. But before they could turn to escape, a cold wind swept through the cabin, extinguishing their flashlights. Darkness enveloped them, and a low, chilling laugh filled the air. The unmistakable sound of footsteps echoed around them, like growing louder with each passing moment. Get out! Emma shouted, her voice barely above a whisper as they scrambled toward the door. As they burst out of the cabin, they were met with a horrifying sight. Shadows flickered among the trees, and ghostly figures danced in the moonlight. The whispers grew louder, and the air crackled with energy. Run! Emma yelled, and they tore through the woods, branches clawing at their clothes. They stumbled back toward the clearing, the weight of fear urging them on. The screams and laughter of the apparitions echoed behind them, and they could feel a presence closing in. As they reached the edge of Hollow Hill, they didn't dare look back racing down the hill until they reached the safety of their campsite. Breathless and terrified, they collapsed by the dying fire. What the hell was that? Mark panted, his face pale. I don't know, Emma replied, her voice shaking. But we shouldn't have come here. As they tried to process what had happened, a cold breeze swept through the campsite, and a faint voice whispered, You disturbed my peace. Panic surged through them as they realized the curse of Hollow Hill was more than just a story. They had awakened something sinister, and it would not rest until it claimed what it sought. That Halloween night marked the beginning of their nightmares as the presence followed them home, a reminder of their folly and the curse they had inadvertently unleashed. From that day on, Hollow Hill became a place of fear and caution for the teens, a haunting memory of the darkness they dared to disturb. Story number eight. It was Halloween night in 2003, and the small town of Crestwood was abuzz with excitement. Children scurried about in their costumes, parents carried bags filled with candy, and the air was thick with the smell of pumpkin spice. But in the heart of Crestwood lay an old cemetery that had long been abandoned and forgotten. 
a place locals avoided, especially on Halloween. The cemetery, overrun with weeds and tangled vines, held stories of its own, stories of those who had died tragically and the restless souls who never found peace. Legend had it that every Halloween, the spirits of the deceased would awaken, wandering the graves as they relived the final moments of their lives. Most folks dismissed it as mere superstition, but a few believed it to be true. Among the skeptics was a group of four high school seniors, Mark, Rachel, Jess, and Ben, who decided to challenge the town's eerie reputation. They were determined to explore the cemetery that night, armed with flashlights and bravado, convinced that nothing could scare them. Come on, it'll be fun, Mark said, grinning as they approached the rusted gate. The moon hung high in the sky, casting an otherworldly glow over the landscape. It's just an old cemetery. What could possibly happen? Rachel shivered, but followed the group through the creaking gate. I don't know, guys. This place gives me the creeps, she admitted. Don't be such a chicken. Ben laughed, his voice echoing in the stillness. Jess, the most adventurous of the group, encouraged them to keep going. Let's see if we can find any interesting gravestones. Maybe we can take some pictures for Halloween. The friends wandered deeper into the cemetery, their flashlights illuminating the weathered stones. Names faded by time and overgrown ivy whispered stories of lives long past. As they wandered, they couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. After a while, they reached the center of the cemetery, where an ancient oak tree stood sentinel over a particularly large grave marked with a stone angel. Jess gasped. Look at this one, it's so beautiful. She stepped closer, her flashlight illuminating the angel's sorrowful face. As they admired the grave, a chill swept through the air and the wind began to howl. Suddenly, a low moan echoed from behind them. The group froze, hearts racing. What was that? Rachel whispered, panic creeping into her voice. Probably just the wind, Mark said, though he wasn't entirely convinced. Let's go check it out, Jess suggested. Her curiosity peaked. They hesitantly made their way toward the sound, pushing through the thick underbrush. As they approached a cluster of trees, the air grew colder, and the moaning intensified. Suddenly, they stumbled upon an old, crumbling tombstone, its inscription worn away by time. Look, there's something written here, Ben said, brushing away the leaves. As he cleared the surface, the letters became visible. Here lies Clara Thompson, 1921 to 1945, beloved daughter, lost but not forgotten. As soon as he finished reading, a loud rustle broke through the stillness and the ground beneath them began to tremble. The friends exchanged terrified glances. We should get out of here, Rachel said, her voice shaking. But before they could turn back, a figure emerged from the shadows, a translucent woman dressed in a tattered white gown, her eyes hollow and filled with sorrow. Why have you come? She wailed, her voice echoing through the trees. Leave this place. Mark's bravado crumbled and he stumbled backward. What do you want? He shouted, trying to mask his fear. I seek my mother. The ghost replied, her gaze piercing through the darkness. She was taken from me too soon and I cannot find her. Jess, feeling a strange connection to the spirit, stepped forward. We can help you. Where is she? The spirit pointed toward the older section of the cemetery, where the headstones appeared even more worn. She lies beneath the willow tree, but the darkness holds her captive. A surge of bravery coursed through Jess. Let's go. We can help her find peace. But as they turned to leave, the ghostly figure began to fade. Hurry, before it's too late. The friends sprinted toward the far end of the cemetery, their hearts pounding. As they reached the ancient willow tree, they stopped, breathless and terrified. What now? Ben asked, glancing around nervously. Dig, Jess said, determination etched on her face. If we can find her mother's grave, maybe we can help her. The group began to clear away the leaves and dirt around the base of the tree, fingers trembling as they dug deeper into the earth. After what felt like an eternity, they uncovered a weathered tombstone that read, Evelyn Thompson, 1900 to 1945, beloved mother and friend. As they brushed away the dirt, the wind began to howl and the ground trembled once more. We've got to get out of here, Rachel cried, her voice rising in panic. No, we have to finish this, Jess insisted, her eyes wide with determination. They worked together, finally clearing away enough earth to reveal the full name etched in the stone. As they stepped back, the ghost of Clara materialized beside them, her expression one of gratitude mixed with desperation. 
Thank you for bringing me to her. Now I can rest. But before they could process what was happening, a dark mist swirled around the willow tree, and the atmosphere shifted. A low growl emanated from the shadows, and the friends realized they were not alone. The cemetery was alive with restless spirits, drawn to the energy of the revelation. Clara looked at them one last time, her face full of sorrow. You have done well, but now you must leave. The darkness will not let you go easily. Panic surged through the group as the shadows encroached, swirling around them. Run! Mark shouted, and they turned, racing back toward the entrance, their hearts pounding in their chests. The cemetery seemed to come alive, shadows reaching out as they fled through the overgrown paths. They could hear the whispers of the spirits, mingling with the cries of Clara as they escaped into the night. Finally, they burst through the rusty gate, collapsing onto the ground outside, gasping for breath. They turned to look back, but the cemetery stood silent, the whispers fading into the night. The experience left them shaken, and though they tried to share their story, few believed them. Each Halloween that followed, the group would remember the night they ventured into the depths of the cemetery and encountered the lost souls that still roamed its grounds. In Crestwood, the cemetery remained an enigma, a place where the past lingered like a ghost, calling for those brave enough to listen. And every Halloween, the wind would whisper through the trees, a reminder that some stories are never truly buried and some souls are forever searching for peace. Story number nine. In a small coastal town named Driftwood, Halloween was the most awaited time of the year. Each October, the townsfolk engaged in elaborate preparations, decorating their homes with cobwebs, skeletons, and jack-o'-lanterns. But beneath the festive facade lay a dark secret, known only to a few. Long ago, a woman named Eliza Moore had lived in Driftwood. She was an herbalist, renowned for her knowledge of plants and their medicinal properties. However, after a series of unexplained deaths in the community, the townspeople turned on her, uh, believing she was a witch responsible for their misfortunes. On Halloween night, fueled by fear and superstition, they dragged her from her home and executed her, declaring her a witch. As the years passed, stories of Eliza's spirit haunting the woods surrounding the town spread, especially among children who dared each other to venture into the forest on Halloween night. It was said that if you wandered too deep, you could hear her cries for help or see her ghostly figure lurking among the trees. Five years ago, a group of teenagers eager to prove their bravery decided to spend Halloween night in the woods. Sarah, Mark, Lila, and Jake had grown up hearing tales about Eliza. They laughed off the warnings, convinced it was all just a story. They packed their bags with flashlights, snacks, and a portable speaker ready for a night of fun and frights. As twilight fell, they made their way to the edge of the forest, where the trees stood like sentinels, looming ominously in the fading light. The air grew thick with anticipation as they stepped into the woods, the crunch of leaves underfoot echoing in the silence. They wandered deeper, sharing ghost stories and laughing at the shadows that danced around them. Hours passed and the sun dipped below the horizon, plunging the forest into darkness. They set up their camp near a small clearing, surrounded by towering trees. As they settled in, they began to hear strange sounds, twigs snapping in the distance, whispers carried by the wind. It's just the wind, Mark reassured them, though his voice wavered. They laughed nervously, trying to dismiss the growing unease that settled among them. As the night wore on, Lila suggested they play a game to lighten the mood. Let's do a seance and try to contact Eliza, she exclaimed. The others exchanged skeptical glances, but eventually agreed, eager to prove their bravery. They formed a circle, holding hands, and lit a candle in the center. Lila took a deep breath and began to chant, invoking Eliza's spirit. At first, nothing happened. The forest remained eerily quiet, but a chill ran through the air. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew through the clearing, extinguishing the candle. The darkness enveloped them, and fear began to seep into their hearts. Okay, maybe this wasn't such a good idea, Jake said, his voice barely above a whisper. Just as they decided to pack up and leave, a soft sob echoed through the trees, chilling them to the bone. It was faint at first, but it grew louder, a mournful cry that reverberated through the forest. The friends exchanged terrified glances, adrenaline coursing through their veins. Is that someone crying? Sarah asked, her eyes wide. They remained silent, listening intently as the sobbing continued. The sound seemed to be coming from deeper within the woods. 
Driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, they hesitantly moved toward the sound. As they walked, the forest around them grew denser, the trees closing in like a dark embrace. The air felt heavier, thick with tension, and an unsettling feeling crawled up their spines. Maybe we should turn back, Mark suggested. The others urged him on, their desire to uncover the truth overpowering their fear. They trudged deeper, the sobbing becoming clearer and more desperate. It was unmistakable now, a voice filled with anguish. Then they reached a clearing, and what they saw sent their hearts racing. In the center stood a figure, draped in tattered white clothing that fluttered despite the lack of wind. Her hair hung long and wild, obscuring her face. Eliza. The friends froze, terror rooting them to the spot. Please, help me, the figure whispered, her voice echoing in the stillness. They won't let me go. Lila's heart ached for the lost soul before them, but fear held her back. What do you want, she called out, her voice trembling. Eliza raised her head and they could see her eyes, dark, hollow voids that seemed to draw in the light. Free me, she pleaded. I am bound to this place by the hatred of the townsfolk. Only the truth can set me free. The air around them grew colder and shadows began to dance at the edges of the clearing. The friends huddled closer together, their minds racing with thoughts of how to help the spirit. What truth? Jake shouted, desperation edging his voice. What do we need to do? Eliza pointed toward the forest, her ghostly finger trembling. Find the book, the book of herbs. It holds the key. It was hidden in the old cemetery when they buried me. Without thinking, the group turned and ran, racing back toward the edge of the forest. The sobs faded behind them, replaced by an ominous silence that weighed heavily on their hearts. They reached the town just as the moon rose high in the sky, casting an eerie glow over the old cemetery where Eliza was buried. It was a place they had visited as children, a place of stories and ghostly legends. They hurried through the graves, searching for anything that resembled a hidden book. The air felt thick with dread, and the night seemed to pulse with an unseen energy. Finally, after what felt like hours, Sarah spotted something half buried beneath a stone slab, a weathered leather-bound book. As she lifted it from its resting place, a chill swept through the cemetery, and the ground beneath them seemed to tremble. They gathered around her, breathless as they opened the book. Inside, they found notes about the herbs Eliza had used for healing, along with details of the false accusations that had led to her death. We have to read this out loud, Lila said her voice steady despite the fear that clutched at her. We need to tell her story. They took turns reading the passages, each word echoing through the night. With each revelation, the atmosphere shifted, the tension in the air dissipating like fog under the sun. The wind picked up, swirling around them as they finished the last line. As silence fell, the ground trembled once more, and they felt a presence nearby. In the dim light, they saw Eliza's spirit materialize before them, her face no longer twisted in anguish, but serene, her dark voids replaced with gentle light. Thank you, she whispered, her voice now soft and melodic. You have freed me. I can finally rest. With those words, she began to fade, her form dissolving into shimmering light that danced through the cemetery. The friends stood in awe, a mix of relief and sorrow washing over them. As they walked back through the forest, the weight of fear had lifted. They had faced the darkness, unearthed the truth, and in doing so had set a tortured spirit free. Halloween and Driftwood would never be the same again. The stories of Eliza Moore transformed from tales of terror into legends of courage and compassion. Every year after that, the townsfolk gathered to remember her, honoring the woman who had once been wronged and the friends who had unearthed her truth.